Sarah tightened her grip on the steering wheel as her car sped down the desolate highway. The night was inky black, the kind of darkness that seemed to swallow everything beyond the reach of her headlights. She glanced at the dashboard clock, 2.15 a.m. It had been a long shift at the diner, and all she wanted was to get home, crawl into bed, and forget about the world. The road stretched out before her, a ribbon of asphalt disappearing into the void. Trees loomed on either side, their gnarled branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. Sarah shivered, though the car's heater was on full blast. There was something unsettling about this stretch of road. She had driven it countless times, but tonight, it felt different. Sinister, even. Her thoughts were interrupted by a flicker of movement in the rearview mirror. Sarah glanced up, heart pounding. At first she saw nothing but darkness. Then, as her eyes adjusted she spotted it, a shadowy figure standing by the roadside, it was gone in an instant, leaving her questioning whether she had seen anything at all. She shook her head, trying to dispel the creeping dread that was settling in her chest. Just tired, she muttered to herself. You're just tired. But the feeling of being watched persisted. She turned on the radio, hoping for some music to calm her nerves. Static crackled through the speakers followed by a disjointed voice. Sarah frowned and twisted the dial, trying to find a clear station. The voice grew louder, more coherent. If you're out there driving tonight, beware, the roads aren't as empty as they seem. Sarah's heart skipped a beat. She quickly switched off the radio, the silence that followed almost as unnerving as the strange broadcast. Her eyes darted to the rearview mirror again, half expecting to see the shadowy figure reappear. Nothing, just the dark, empty road behind her. She took a deep breath and forced herself to focus on the road ahead. But the unease gnawed at her, a persistent whisper in the back of her mind. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was out there, lurking just beyond the edge of the light. The abandoned car came into view suddenly, its headlights dim and flickering. Sarah's heart raced as she slowed down curiosity and fear warring within her. The car was an old rusted sedan, its paint chipped and peeling. It looked like it had been sitting there for years. Sarah pulled over to the side of the road, her own car idling as she peered out the window. The sedan's driver's side door was open, hanging ajar as if someone had left in a hurry. She strained to see if anyone was inside, but the interior was shrouded in darkness. Hello. Can you see me? Hello? She called out, her voice trembling. Is anyone there? Silence, not even the rustle of leaves or the call of nocturnal animals. Just an oppressive suffocating silence, she was about to drive away when she saw it again, a shadowy figure in her rearview mirror, standing directly behind her car. Sarah's breath caught in her throat, she turned around, eyes wide with fear, but there was nothing there. Just the empty road and the looming trees. Her hands shook as she shifted the car into gear and drove away. The image of the abandoned car, and the shadowy figure burned into her mind. She tried to rationalize it, telling herself it was just her imagination playing tricks on her. But deep down she knew something was very wrong. As she continued down the road strange things began to happen. The radio would sporadically burst into life, playing snippets of old broadcasts and eerie, distorted music. The headlights flickered, casting dancing shadows that seemed to move with a life of their own. Sarah's sense of direction became muddled, and she realized with growing horror that she was driving in circles. No matter how many turns she took she always ended up back at the same stretch of road. The abandoned car came into view again and again, each time looking more decrepit and eerie. The shadowy figure appeared more frequently in her rearview mirror, always vanishing when she turned around. Fear clawed at her, turning her knuckles white as she gripped the steering wheel. She couldn't escape this nightmare, this twisted loop that trapped her in an endless night drive. The sense of being watched grew stronger, the shadows pressing in on her from all sides. It was as if the road itself was alive, a malevolent entity that had ensnared her in its dark embrace. Desperation drove her to do something she would never have considered otherwise. As she rounded a bend she saw a figure standing by the roadside, thumb outstretched. A hitchhiker. Sarah slowed down, her heart pounding. The figure stepped into the beam of her headlights, revealing a young man with disheveled hair and a haunted look in his eyes. He looked normal enough, but there was something off about him, something that set her nerves on edge. Need a ride, she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The man nodded and climbed into the passenger seat. As soon as he was inside the car seemed to grow colder. 
Sarah glanced at him, trying to gauge his intentions. He stared straight ahead, his expression unreadable. Thanks for stopping, he said after a long silence. Not many people would, Sarah forced a smile, it's no problem. Where are you headed? Just down the road, he replied, anywhere but here. They drove in silence for a while, the tension thick in the air. Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that she had seen him before, though she couldn't quite place where. The hitchhiker began to speak, his voice low and eerie. Do you believe in ghosts? he asked suddenly. Sarah's grip on the steering wheel tightened. I, I don't know, why do you ask? He turned to look at her, his eyes dark and unsettling. Because this road is haunted, by the ghosts of those who never made it to their destination. As the hitchhiker spoke, Sarah's mind was flooded with memories she had tried to forget. She saw flashes of her childhood, the long drives with her parents, the car accidents that had taken their lives. She had been the sole survivor, left with scars both physical and emotional. The hitchhiker's stories grew more disturbing, each one eerily familiar. He spoke of a young girl who had survived a car crash only to be haunted by the spirits of her deceased family. He described the relentless nightmares, the sense of being followed, the constant fear. Sarah's hands trembled as she realized he was talking about her. Who are you? She demanded, her voice shaking. The hitchhiker smiled, a cold sinister smile that sent chills down her spine. I'm someone who knows your pain, your guilt. I'm here to help you face it. The line between reality and nightmare began to blur. Sarah's mind was a whirlwind of fear and confusion. The hitchhiker's presence became more menacing, his stories more personal and accusatory. He seemed to know everything about her, her darkest secrets and deepest fears. Hallucinations plagued her. She saw her parents' faces in the shadows, heard their voices whispering in the wind. The road stretched out endlessly before her, a nightmarish loop that she couldn't escape. She felt herself unraveling, her grip on reality slipping away. Sarah's descent into madness was swift and terrifying. The hitchhiker's stories became accusations, each one cutting deeper into her psyche. She saw visions of the car crash that had claimed her parents' lives, relived the terror and guilt that had haunted her ever since. The road twisted and warped around her, the trees closing in like a suffocating shroud. In her delirium, she realized the hitchhiker was no ordinary man. He was a manifestation of her guilt and fear, a dark specter that had taken on physical form to torment her. His face shifted and changed, becoming a grotesque mask of her worst nightmares. She screamed, but no sound emerged. The car veered off the road crashing into the trees. Pain exploded through her body, but she welcomed it. It was a release, a way out of the relentless torment. In the aftermath of the crash Sarah lay in the wreckage, her vision fading. The hitchhiker stood over her, his eyes cold and unfeeling. It's time to face the truth, he whispered. You can't run from it anymore. As darkness claimed her, Sarah's mind was flooded with images of her past. She saw her parents' faces, heard their voices one last time. She understood now that she had been running from her guilt, her fear, and that the road had been a manifestation of her own tortured mind. With her last breath she accepted her fate, embraced the darkness, and let go of her pain. The hitchhiker vanished, leaving only the echo of his words in the still night air. When the authorities found the wreckage the next morning, they were puzzled by the scene. The road was empty, the night eerily quiet. Sarah's car was a twisted heap of metal, but there was no sign of a hitchhiker. Only Sarah's lifeless body, her face a mask of peace, hinted at the terror she had endured. As they loaded her into the ambulance, a sense of unease settled over the scene. The road, it seemed, held secrets that would never be fully understood, and as the first light of dawn broke through the